welcome back, everybody. Did you have a good day? Yeah. Yeah, I had a good day, too. It's hot, though. Was it really hot outside? It wasn't hot? I was hot. I was really sweaty. <laughs> you don't feel the heat? Oh, that's a blessing not to feel the heat outside, doesn't it? <laughs> So tonight we're going to go over, oh, before we go over anything, we are going to talk about what was the C we talked about last night. Now, I never said it, but you said it in your classroom. What was the C we talked about? I, I saw Maddie first. I'm like, creation was the C last night. Tonight we're going to talk about two new Cs. And I want to make sure I get them right because I don't want to mess them up. Okay, corruption and catastrophe. Those are hard words. Those are really big, long words. So co corruption means like it got all messed up. And catastrophe means like a big thing that happens that's like a disaster. Like just, oh, what a catastrophe. It's terrible. So those two things are what we're going to talk about tonight. And that's going to be with Mr. Kingston. He's going to talk to you about that in a little bit. But first, we're going to go over our verse from last night, our theme verse first. So does anybody remember the theme verse from last night? Anna does, I see that. Anybody else remember it? Lillian and Maddie and Emmy, good job. Okay. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Okay, we're going to say it all together. It's right there. Ready? It's 1 Timothy 1.17. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, I'm going to try something. I didn't ask Mr. Kingston how to do this. How do I just make it blank? That's what I need. Can I do that? Or make it black at all? Stand in front of it. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so ready? It's first Timothy one seventeen. Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Excellent job. We're gonna sing the song. Genesis 1 1. Let's say it together. Ready? Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, watch this. I'm going back to the first one. You can't look at it. Haha. -ha. Okay, so here we go. Now we're going to do. Everybody get settled. Come on in. Come in, come in. They're here. Okay, I think what we'll do is I think we'll sing our song that goes with this one now. See if you remember it. Good. 
good. You did a great job. Now I have a new verse tonight. It is Psalm 14.3, and let's see if we can say it together. It's right there, and it looks like it's hard. looks like it's going to take you forever to memorize this, but it won't. It's really easy. Here's what it says. You ready? They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So that, it seems really hard, right? But there's a song that goes with it, and I'm going to show you how it goes. But the song starts right here. Look. So the song starts where it says there, and it says, There is none that doeth good, no, not one, no, not one. It says it again. And then it says, There's none that doeth good, no, not one, no, not one. And then it goes back to the beginning, and it says, They are all gone aside, they are all together become filthy. And if you memorize it in the song, and just when you go to do the verse, you just kind of have to flip-flop it so you can say it in the right order, okay? So here comes the song. Let's see if you can figure it out. What do you think? Was it kind of easy? It's not that hard now. Now, once you do it, so let's do it one more time now that you know how to do it. Great job. Okay, now we are going to go over a song. Oops, hold on one second. Remember how to do this. Let's go over. Actually, Allison, I'm switching up. Okay, we're going to do Oh God, Our Help in Ages Past. But let's stand up and sing this one. So everybody stand up. See if you can remember it from last night. Last night we, were, we did one verse, right? But tonight we're going to add another verse, second verse. Can we try the second verse one more time? But I'll let you sit down this time. That way everybody can see the words really good because it's hard to see up here. Let's see. Let me go back. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Under.
good job, everybody. I have one more new song for you tonight. It's one we didn't sing last night. So let's see. Oh, you're going to like this one. This one is about how we can't do anything exactly right. We kind of always make mistakes. We can try really hard and do really good, but we always end up kind of messing up, right? I mean, do you think you ever go through one whole day where you don't mess up one time? I don't. I don't go through a whole day without messing up at least, I don't know, 100 times. <laughs> I just feel like I'm always messing up. So, and that's where we have to look to Jesus because he's the only way, right? Where he's the only thing that keeps us straight. He died for us because we mess up so much. So this song is about that. So let's see if you can, this is a fun song. Let's see what you think of it. See if I can do this. Hold on. No. Go. Here we go. <laughs> We could do it one more time because we have one minute, but it goes way faster than that. So we're going to go faster. So let's see if I can. A little, we'll just go a little faster tonight. Here we go. All right, let's try just a little faster. Ready? Man couldn't live in the garden without messing it up. Man couldn't handle creation. Okay, so now we are going to have a special speaker come up and talk to us, and that is Mr. Kingston. He's going to talk to us about corruption and catastrophe, those two C's I was talking about. So let's give him good attention. All right, let's close our eyes and pray, and then we can get started. All right, close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for VBS. Thank you for helping these little kids come over here, O oh Lord, and listen to your word. And Lord, even now, as we share, O oh Lord, and, and read from your word and uh, hear your word, Lord, hide me, O oh Lord, put the right words in my mouth that 
these words can be impactful for their lives, O oh Lord, in the years to come. Be with me and guide me, O oh Lord, and uh, be with us as we learn from your scriptures. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so yesterday it was Mr. Tom who's here, and he introduced you to the first C, and that is creation. That's right. And at, once the creation was done, it was so perfect. Everything was so perfect, right? We saw God saw that everything that he created was good, and he rested on the seventh day, and he looked at it, it was so perfect. But that is where everything stopped, and something else started to happen. So what happened? To introduce us to the next two Cs, I bring to you Tox, okay? He's our animal pal for today. And when you look at Tox, you see two colors on him. Right? Good, very good, good, very good. So he's got a dark color on him and he's got a blue color on him, right? So the dark one is what represents darkness, black, sin, and that is corruption, right? And the blue is what represents water and that, that reminds us of the judgment on sin. And that is what Mrs. Estabrook referred to as catastrophe, okay? And so we'll read more about what was this and what happened to this perfect uh, creation. I myself am not able to. <laughs> okay. So the fall of sin, the fall of all, right? The sin came into this world and how did that come and, and result in corruption is what we are going to learn and so, what is corruption? What is corruption? Yes? That's true, yeah, something, something like interrupting what is good, what is good becoming bad. That is what is corruption, right? And why did it go bad? What happened that caused it to go, go bad? Um, in, in the Bible, in Genesis chapter three, we learn about a serpent. Now that serpent was one of the animals and it was tricky than any of the other animals that God had created, okay? And so um, we, know, we, we don't know for sure if it was really a snake. It could be an extinct animal, but what we know for sure is who was inside that serpent. And the Bible tells us that it was Satan. Now, who is Satan? Yes? Very good, very good. Yeah, he was one of the angels that God had created and he tried to exalt himself or put himself above God. And so God threw him out of his kingdom, right? And so from that time on, Satan is always against what God wants or God wants us to do. And that's how, uh, that's how Satan now entered into the serpent, in the form of a serpent. And he was in the garden of Eden. Now, I, I, I hope all of you know what is the Garden of Eden. When God created the universe and he created everything, he created this Garden of Eden where um, Adam and Eve were, were there inside that garden. And God told Adam and Eve, you can eat of any fruit from this garden, but of this one tree, I don't want you to touch it. I don't want you to eat of it because it is the tree of uh, the knowledge of good and evil. And God said, the day that you eat of it, you will surely die, okay? And that's, that's what God said. And that was his commandment to Adam and Eve. And so Satan wanted to circumvent that. And so he came in and he saw Eve around the, uh, nearby the tree and he came in and said, hey, why don't you eat of this fruit? It looks so good. Why don't you eat of it? And Eve repeated what God said. God told me not to eat of it. And the day when I eat, I would die. And so Satan mocked at Eve and said, a lie. And he said, did God say that you would die? The day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you can see like how God sees you. And so Eve was tricked into it and she went ahead and took a bite. And not only she, she gave it to Adam as well and Adam also took a bite out of it. 
So what happened? God told Adam and Eve not to eat of the fruit, but Adam and Eve went ahead and ate of the fruit because of Satan's deception. Doesn't matter what what deception, but it was what what did they do when when you're told not to do something and you do it? What is it called? Disobedience. Yes, disobedience is a form of sin. It is sin when you disobey God, and that's how corruption came into the world. The first sin that was committed, and from there on. bad and sad things started to happen and so when when that happened animals started to attack each other animals which were friendly with each other started to attack each other frogs such as the tox that i showed you which was harmless started to grow toxins on them poisons on them so that they can protect themselves from other animals from attacking them right good 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 example yeah and then we had bushes uh, which started to grow thorns on them so they can protect themselves from others eating them right and then people started to get sick there was bad weather there was a lot of uh, natural disasters that started to occur all of which was a perfect world now started to get into the corruption mode that's true that's true okay so the bible says in romans 8:22 the whole earth groans with the trouble of a cursed world what was perfect has now started to corrupt okay just think if it was a perfect world like how god created you would probably have a pet lion or a bear right those animals were friendly before the corruption and uh, think of living with jesus forever right that is how god created it he wanted us to have communion with him he wanted us to live along with him in paradise forever now corruption started to put that away and now it is uh, now that world was degrading right and what happened um let's let's go ahead and remind ourselves of this verse where it it points us back to that that no one is good all right let us all uh, say that together psalm 14 Three, they are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. So as time went on, Adam and Eve had children, and their children had children, and so on. But every one was that was born was now a sinner, right? And they chose to do sin. and that kept on growing it became so evil that there was so much corruption that god decided to judge that sin and that leads us to the next c which is catastrophe and catastrophe is a terrible and a destructive event okay such as the global flood which we are which we are going to talk about so god decided to destroy all the living things about in the air and about the land right only one man noah and his family were remained faithful to god and therefore god chose to save them and um two of every kind of animal okay and so what god told noah is um go ahead and build a huge ark so i can keep you safe when i'm going to send out this flood like mrs asterbrook said the flood was for 40 days for 40 days it kept raining on the earth can you imagine that more than a month right kept on raining it kept on raining it was a global flood now some people think that the ark the flood everything is a mystery but let's see how god's word the bible what it tells about it okay the how large was the ark it was a huge ship think about this the width of the ark was two school buses to put together can you imagine that so wide and the height of it was like three giraffes stacked right so tall and the length of it one and a half football fields whoa that is huge that is huge okay and so the question then becomes most of them then keep asking in those days how did noah and his sons build it this was such a huge venture 
was such a huge thing to accomplish. And what we think usually is people of the old age, they were not smart as we are. They did not have the tools that we have, right? Some of it is true, but if you think about it, what was, what was actually with them is the opposite of it. They lived 900 years. 900 years. Can you think about that? Right? So their genes and their body was made very healthy because they were, um, they were closer to what the generations from where God created them. Right? So they were healthy and also they were really intelligent. And so God gave Noah and his sons the wisdom to go ahead and build such a huge ark. And even today, some of the shipbuilders, they use these dimensions in proportion to build some of the huge ships that we see. So you can see it was God's wisdom that led them to build that. So how did all the animals get onto the ark? Yeah, it's a big door, but how did the animals come there to the ark? True, that is true. Yeah, God sent them. God sent the animals. He directed all the animals to go there. It was not Noah going and calling out to all the animals and trying to get them in, but God directed the animals to get in there. So looking at these animals, how many animals are there in the world? More than 100, right? So many. How can we fit all those animals into the ark? So that's why God said two of every kind, right? It's very important of what is two of every kind. What you're seeing here is dogs, okay? The kind of dogs, right? And you have uh, what? Dalmatians, beagles, wolves, coyotes. But God said you just have to take two of each kind, not of every species in this. So out of all of this, he just had to take two. So he had to take a male and a female. And that's all that God directed these animals also that way. And so there was enough space for all the animals. So you ask, what about the dinosaurs? Right? The dinosaurs are so huge. How about them? Actually, if you look at it, God made sure that the young adults were the ones which were taken into the ark, not the old, fully grown ones. Even with the fully grown ones, most of the full grown dinosaurs, like T-Rex, right, which you've seen in the movies, um, with the sharp teeth and so tall, right, uh, they... Um, not, not, all, uh, t not all dinosaurs grow to that level, okay? In fact, most of the dinosaurs, when they grow full grown, they will be the size of a sheep or a bison. That's a cow, kind of a cow, right? That's how big it is. So they were perfectly able to fit inside the ark. And then um, some people keep saying that, oh, no, no, the, the flood was not uh, all through the world. It was just in one place. It only happened in a single place or in a small place there. Now we can ask the question, why did God have to ask Noah to build such a huge ark if it was just a local flood, right? And also, if Noah knew about the flood coming up, he could have gone to some other place and escaped the flood, right? But it was not so. In fact, the Bible says in Genesis 7 that the waters rose at least 25 foot above the highest mountains that you can see in this world. That means water had to cover the entire earth. So it was a global flood. And you can see evidence of that all around. When you go around, when you see different places, this is the Grand Canyon. And you can see when it floods, what happens is there's water, mud that is flowing on and forms sedimentary layers. And when it kills things on top, it all uh, form, gets into layers inside the rock. And that is called fossils, right? And we, there, people are still finding millions and millions of fossils. Now, talking about fossils and millions, people think that it takes millions of years to form fossils. But no, it just takes the right condition. What you see there is a fossilized hat, a fossilized teddy bear. It didn't take millions of years. It took the right conditions for it to form those fossils. Okay? All right? The global flood was one of the reasons why we have fossils, a lot of fossils. Okay, and what about these dinosaurs? They were on the ark, what happened to them? So these dinosaurs, they also became extinct, like how we, have go, we see animals go extinct today because of diseases, because of people over hunting them, because there was no food, there were all these natural causes. That is why dinosaurs are extinct today. So all this to prove that the Bible is true. And then when the, when the catastrophe was over, 
God rested the ark. Noah and his family got out and they worshipped God by, uh, by uh, making a sacrifice and, unto God and saying, thank you, Lord, for saving us from this universal flood. And God responded with a rainbow. rainbow. That's true. Yeah, the next time you see a rainbow, think about God's promises for, for us, okay? And God said, I will never again destroy this world with a global flood. And God holds his promises uh, true even today. So, the next time you see talks, let it remind you about these two C's, corruption and catastrophe. And uh, let, it, let it remind you about sin and the judgment on sin. Our God is just and therefore he will judge sin. I know I am sinful, right? And I need uh, God and he has to save me. How about you? Right? How about you? And, and do you realize that all of you, all of us have sinned and we need God's hand to save us? Like Noah, we need to trust in a God who is willing to save us. We will talk more about that in the coming days. But let's close out with our memory verse again, okay? Shall we go ahead and say this once again? Psalm 14, 3. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, pray and close this out, okay? Heavenly Father, we thank you for reminding us once again about how perfect this world was and what we did, O oh Lord, to bring sin and also, Lord, to bring your judgment on this world. Lord, we pray that we would know our sinful state and that we would come running to you and seek your guidance, O oh Lord, to help us and to save us uh, from our uh, decaying, corrupted state, O oh Lord. Be with us the rest of this evening. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Thank you for your good listening. Okay. I think we should probably just skip the skit, right? And just go on to something else. Would that be good? No? No? Okay. All right. Let's do the skit then. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. I think Jungle James is ready over there. Oh, what a great day to go sailing to the beautiful Riviera Falls. The sun is out, the birds are out. And I am out of soapy water for the smog. It's okay, Sam, you've done a lot of good work. Just sit back and enjoy the ride. Mr. James, I think there's something odd about our tourist. Hmm, I think you're right. No one's ever paid in pennies before. No, it's not that. It's not the first time guests have brought in empty money bags, either. Well... And we never pry into people's luggage, even if it pops open and we see beach hats, metal detectors, and shovels. Exactly. And, and Isn't that odd? Why, Sam, you're right. Who brings beach hats to the jungle? Mr. James. You know, Sam, I think there's something up with our tourist. Hmm, we should have oh a little boy. chat. Oh, Miss Cassidy. Be right there. Why, Mr. James, have we come to Fortune's Fork yet? Fortune's Fork? It's up ahead, but Miss Cassidy, you know we're not going that way. Oh, no. I hear it's too dangerous. That's right. We must continue in the straight path of the river. No need to chase after things that will take us away from the right way. Sure, Mr. James. Do you think you could point it out when we pass by? Well, um, I guess. I, I just want to see this mysterious river where nobody returns. Mr. James, she's up to something. Well, a look never hurt anybody. Ah, Fortune's Fork, it's straight up ahead. Can I see? Uh. <laughs> Look, Cassidy, what are you doing? I've taken us down Fortune's Fork. Oh, but why? Okay. 
I'm going to find the treasure that no one has ever found. Then everyone will know the name Cassidy Cash. Oh, oh no. Come on, no, Sam. No. Let's take a look at that head of yours. Well, it can't be true that no one ever returns from Fortune's Fork, can it? They're so sneaky. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. You'll have to come back tomorrow to find out, right? Um, okay. We have three minutes. I didn't know. Did, you, did Pastor want to say anything or did you? Okay. All right. We will, say, we will actually see if we can say the verse we learned tonight without looking. Even though we just learned it tonight. But you know what? We've said it a bunch of times. Don't you think we can do it? Let's try it. Hold on. Look at it really good. You look okay. You ready? Let's see if I can do it. Oh. Okay, now I've got her. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> One second. Psalm 14.3. Psalm 14.3. Okay, got it. All right, here we go. All right, ready? Psalm 14.3. They have all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Good job. Good job. That is the reference that gets me every time. I've got to work on that. Okay. And now I think we're going to sing it one more time too because it's the song of the night here. Okay, and I think we have just enough time to sing one from last night that we didn't sing tonight. Let's see if we can find it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This one right here. See if you remember this from last night. Good job. Okay, I think we'll get the rabbits, which are the first row up here, to go ahead and line up at the side door over there. Everybody else stay put for a second, but the rabbits can go.